Hello again, everybody. I'm John Kosar, Chief Market Strategist at Asbury Research. Thanks for viewing our latest Following the Money podcast. Today is Super Bowl Sunday, February 11th, 2024. Today I'll be talking about what our latest data-driven market analysis and quantitative models are saying about current financial market conditions. That is, when to be on offense and looking for opportunities, and when to be playing defense and protecting your capital. Now let's follow the money. In this video podcast, I'm going to take you inside of some of the latest Asbury Research reports and model updates, uh, which are inside of the Research Center, that's the paywall, uh, inside of uh, our website at asburyresearch.com. And we're going to talk about some of the latest signals that these are giving us about upcoming U.S. financial market direction. First one off the bat, we want to take a look at our Asbury 6. Our Asbury 6 is meant to be really an indicator rather than a model. I built this metric probably five, six years ago. It could have been even a little longer than that. The reason I did is because the way the market traded day to day started to change. Um, I think a lot of the reason for that change was a lot more computerized trading, a lot more algorithmic trading. Uh, by some estimates, 80% of the daily trading volume in the stock market are these algos. <clears throat> and as a result, what happens there is we get a lot of days where the market's up 40 or 50 points today. Um, the following day, it's down 40. The next day, it's down another 25. And now we're thinking maybe we made a mistake and wanting to be long the market. And then three days later, the market is right back up and making new highs. So maybe you got stopped out of your long or scared out of your long and you're forced to buy it again three days later. So I needed a better way of determining what the real internal health of the market was than trying to chase the tail of the S&P 500 every day. So we started to back test my favorite tactical tools throughout my 40 year career in the markets, started putting them together in different groups, trying to make them diverse as possible so we can get a real nice cross section of what the baseline health of the stock market was every day. Very much the same way as when you go to see your doctor once a year for your annual physical. First thing he does, he may make a mental note of what you look like as you come through the door with your uh, you know, nice shirt on and your hair combed. Maybe once he sits you on the bench and does his little test, he may think things are not quite as good looking under the hood as he tests your uh, blood pressure, takes your pulse, uh, uh, test your reflexes and listens to your heart and lungs. This is what the A6 is supposed to do for the market. So right now, all six, including the rate of change in the S&P 500, a momentum tool, the relative performance of stocks versus high yield bonds, investor asset flows, volatility, trading volume, and market breadth are all positive. They're all green. These numbers inside of the cells are the date that each one of the constituent metrics turn green. So right now, everything's healthy for the market. But again, this is a sensitive tool and it can start to turn red very quickly if the market starts to lose its internal strength. The other tactical model uh, that is really more of a model, it's meant for older, wealthier, and more risk averse market investors to participate in the stock market with a lot less risk is called the correction protection model. It's a CPM is what we call it here. The CPM model, um, which on average over the past six or seven years has averaged about five trades per year is on a risk on status uh, since November the 2nd. The S&P 500 has risen by 16% since then. If you want more information about the A6 or CPM, go to asburyresearch.com and go to models across the top of the screen and you can get more details there. Uh, so now the next thing we want to look at is sector rotation. This is our CEF model. CEF is an acronym for sector ETF asset flows and it measures invest investor asset flows that are moving around the 11 sectors of the S&P 500 in three different time frames. As the graphic shows, technology, 
consumer discretionary and communication services are the three top ranked sectors. The lower the number on the ranking, the stronger the flows, the velocity of money that are moving into those sectors. And again, at three different time frames: trading, tactical, strategic. We take a composite of the three time frames, and right now you see it right here: XLK, XLY, and XLC are the three best ranked sectors according to our model going into next week. Technology XLK has been a favorite sector according to SEEF since January the 16th and has since risen by 7.9% while outperforming the S&P 500 by 2.4%. At the other end of the spectrum down here, you can see we have three avoids. We have materials, which is XLB, energy, XLE, and util utilities, XLU. So XLE has underperformed the S&P 500 by 17 percent since November 1st, November 2nd period, which is right when our CPM model switched back to risk on. So knowing which sector to avoid, according to the CEF model, can be just as important as knowing which ones to buy, keeping you out of those sectors, again, down here where the money is coming from and keeping you in places where the money is going. We're simply following the money here. Our next chart that I wanted to show today it has to do with price momentum. This chart, we have the S&P 500 up top here going back to late 2018. Um, and what we see here is a quarterly overbought condition right now, uh, above 58%. The last several times that we've been at this overbought extreme, we had one at the end of July of last year. As you recall, that was an important top. We had one in January, uh, actually in November of 2021, which led into the January 22 important market top um, and the major bear market that took place in 22. Uh, September 2020 was another one. January of 2020 was a more, even more important one. And finally going back to September of 2018. This is an environmental tool. It shows you the symptom of the market. It doesn't give you a signal. This is telling us that historically, when the market gets this overextended in terms of price momentum, this is when we usually have start of a correction. Correction is overdue right now. It does not mean to sell the market right now. It means to be aware that within the spectrum of overbought, oversold, this is the type of period that you want to really understand that you're historically overextended. And now is when you're looking at indicators like the Asbury 6 and more importantly, the CPM to tell you when it's time to take some of your equity exposure off the table so you can protect yourself um, for the inevitable correction, whatever it may be, and ideally, buy back into the market after the market has had the correction um, and you could reestablish those longs at a much better price. Finally, the last one that we want to show you right here is this is really maybe the most important chart of the series today. This shows the NDX, which is the NASDAQ 100 going back to October of last year. And down here is the total net assets invested in the Invesco QQQ ETF, which is the ETF that tracks NDX with its 21 day moving average. Why 21 days? That is one business month and that's Asbury Research's tactical time period. So what you see here is since November the 2nd, we've had monthly asset expansion. And November 2nd, coincidentally, again, is when our CPM model went to risk on. So you've got a monthly trend of expansion and you can see each time that this trend was tested here's december 6th that was a tactical bottom in ndx january 5th another one january 31st and february 6th uh are right in here so what does that mean it means that the strength coming from the market right now is highly um leaning towards tech um, microsoft amazon NVIDIA and Meta, which together are about 19% of the 
of the market cap of the S&P 500 are basically dragging the U.S. broad market higher, even though uh, the shares outstanding in the S&P 500, the broad market S&P 500, have actually contracted by 7% while the S&P 500 has actually risen by 5%. How is all that happening? It's this chart right here. These big mega cap technology names that um, um, have to do with artificial intelligence, AI, are able to drag the rest of the market higher. So as long as these asset flows that I'm showing right here into big cap tech continue, these big names can continue to drag the rest of the market higher right along with it for however long that's going to last. Uh, a shift back to risk off in the correction protection model will be a key indication for us that the overdue stock market correction is underway. Now, here's just a couple of brief but important announcements. If you like your data-driven approach to investing but don't like to interpret the research and use the signals yourself, we can now trade our models for you via a managed account. Contact us via the contact tab at asburyresearch.com and type money management in the text box to request further information. Uh, finally, I will be interviewed by my friend Oliver Rennick of the Schwab Network tomorrow morning, February 12th at approximately 9.15 Chicago time. That's about 10.15 New York time and 7.15 on the West Coast. If you missed the live version, asburyresearch.com will be posting the video shortly thereafter. So if you'd like to see it, as well as get some, some additional free information that we provide to interested, uh, interested stock market investors, simply go to the contact tab at asburyresearch.com and ask to be added to our contact list. So there it is, our latest bi-weekly bi-weekly following the money podcast for today and a short synopsis of what we think is particularly important to pay attention to as we move deeper into the first quarter of this year we will see you again right here in about two weeks with our next following the money podcast in the meantime you can subscribe to the asbury research channel on youtube for more podcasts and data-driven trading and investment information just like this Enjoy the Super Bowl, and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks.